Like right here, or yeah. Um, you actually have something sticking out of your pocket. It was like a thread, or yeah. oh, weird. What is this? Like a ribbon? It's a ornate romantic note, a scroll, even. And this from past Lars. Oh, Let's see, it's a oh, quite long. Um, what could this be? As you may well know, gorgeous vintage is getting scarcer by the day in thrift stores. So I like to base some reworks around ubiquitous items like button-ups. Gesture to the shirt you're wearing. What did she know? Um, I'll be showing you three separate projects, a sleeve rework, a pocket rework, and a hem rework. So you can pick and choose or use all three methods and create one super shirt that will be almost too powerful and tasteful. Well, let's look at the ingredients. Double fold bias tape scissors and a rotary cutter, pens, Taylor's chalk, a French curve ruler and a yardstick, some fabric and some fusible interfacing, and at least one button-up shirt. The first rework is simple but powerful. Um, I've got two colors of button-ups. One is sort of an off-white beige color, one is black, and I'm going to be cutting the sleeve off of one, well, and the sleeve off the other, <laughs> the same sleeve, and then replacing it. So I'm going to focus on adding this see, right sleeve to the right sleeve of the black shirt to the right armhole of the beige shirt. I'm making it sound complicated, I'm literally just switching out these sleeves. The main thing you have to think about with this one, besides what color you want the color block sleeve to be, is that these are the same size and length, which is weirdly hard to find sometimes in the wild. So I'm basically just eyeballing it. And yes, these are roughly the same here, right here at the armhole. And, and it's okay if one of them is a little longer, especially if it's the one you're adding, because, you know, it might end up kind of shrinking during the process if that makes, it does not make sense, but let's just say it does. Um, okay, so if it's a little longer, basically I'm saying you can always kind of tweak and you're like, oop, okay, now it fits. So they match up here. They're basically the same size. I'm trying to think if it matters as far as like a men's shirt and women's shirt how they button different ways which I'll never I still don't really understand I was just gonna say with that I don't know if it affects this button I truly don't know I've never thought about it but I don't think it should matter the other thing to consider is where am I going to make the cut on this so am I gonna sort of keep this seam intact because I'm if you think I'm gonna be Popping out seams on this, you're crazy. I'm just going to be stitching, uh, stitching over this. Um, all right, so I'm going to make a cut about three eighths of an inch. Oh, oh how do I say this? To, you get it. Anyway, it's onto the sleeve. Basically, I'm leaving like a little extra just in case. It's sort of um, an escape hatch, and I could mark it and all this stuff, but I'm just going to eyeball it. I should mention I decided to work with the right sleeve on this one because there's a pocket on this other side it's just a small thing it doesn't matter but i just decided to go with that sleeve because there's already a pocket over here and so that'd be like two things over here and this guy over here would be like lonely and, and like boring <laughs> this one sleeve this one half of it i don't know also if i decide to i don't know change out this pocket or something um i have that option okay so just need to make sure that I cut the, I mean, yeah, I think it's, I think it's important to cut the same sleeve. I'm trying to think if there's any reason, I'm like, no, I just cut the same sleeve. No explanation needed. And 
With this one already, it was a little bit too long. So um, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do the same cut. That way, if I want to add that sleeve to this one, it'll be easier. And this one was too long anyway. So anyways, all that to say, I think I'm going to also cut about 3 8 of an inch um, onto the sleeve sections. So I have the raw edge of the sleeve and the shirt. And so I'm going to serge the edges because I'm a freak. But you can just get right to sewing them together if you want. But I'm going to serge them and then pin them and sew them. Oh, wait. Sorry. One more thing. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> ah. You can do the same thing for the other shirt. Obviously, you can... You can at the end of this you can have two of these shirts uh i'll just be like surprise you have another you have, you have two okay <laughs> so that's the easiest thing i'm like just say like yeah then you've got two of them at the same time okay. so i'm going to be focusing on the beige shirt with the black sleeve but surprise surprise you can make the the photo negative the twin i don't know of that um and so same thing i'm doing on that you could do to this and uh but i will be putting this to the side to focus on the other one i have surged the edge of the sleeve and the armhole and i've pinned it in place and if it's off you can always like make a little dart or something and so yeah pinned it all the way around and now i'm going to stitch it Onto the second rework. I call this the modern pocket because for some reason, like dot pocket, round pocket, circle pocket, they don't pop. I don't know. So I was just like, well, what is it? It's modernizing it. Sure. And so I am removing the old pocket, which I'm now realizing this um, must be the pocket from another shirt. <laughs> um, so already it's more interesting. I'm undermining my own point. This could be a rework right there but I went ahead and removed this already. So you uh, get your thread snipper or your seam ripper and these were tiny stitches. And so you might have to go from the other side and then kind of do one of these, like, you know, from the side deals and um, you could save these because it might be fun. Also um, doing so many like extra, <laughs> sorry, I'm like, it's like a five in one uh, rework uh, video anyways, because you could get a bunch of pockets and that can be a look on a shirt. So anyway, say that put this to the side. Um, I have this simple, pattern piece for the circle and let's see how it's nearly six inches in diameter that's yep <laughs> confidently saying that and so i cut it on the fold and you could select fabric that is a color block to the shirt um or maybe a print would be interesting but i'm going to do a monochromatic look so i have some white or kind of off-white twill so cut it on the fold and then gonna need to be a little bit bigger than you want and I want it to be this size like sorry spoiler I've been one already <laughs> and so then I've cut some uh fusible interfacing with the the glue side right here kind of just like a normal weight and I want it to be just a little bit smaller all the way around than the uh the main fabric and so I really just cut it with this pattern and then kind of trimmed it around about a fourth of an inch or maybe three eighths Let's iron this in place and then we'll pin it all the way around. Now I'm going to pin it all the way around and it is a little tricky. Actually, I'm going to use the pins that are <laughs> joyless. Wait, where are they? Because it'll be easier to iron. And so let me get some of these. Um, I don't know. I'm like, dress pins, I guess. They're like, they're not like the fun clown pins. They're like, <laughs> the boring pins that you can iron on uh, let's see i do have some pins somewhere that um allegedly you can like iron them or whatever you know they won't i don't even know if these will melt but let's just say they probably will but i have some that like allegedly won't but like they're shaped in a weird like up how do i say it's like an upside down cone shape and they're really hard to like grasp onto 
I know that's like, sorry, this is a great story. Um, anyway, so I was like, well, I paid like $11 for them. And I'm like, never use them. <laughs> um, okay, that's probably good enough because I get the idea. So I'm going to pin them all the way around. And like I said, it's going to buckle and kind of pucker and kind of come to these little points. And so you'll just kind of manipulate it as you pin and as you iron it down. So, and if it's not perfect, you can kind of work with it when you're sewing as well. So look, it's done. So I have gone ahead and pinned all the way around so you don't have to watch me struggle. It should look about like this. And then I'm going to iron it probably on both sides, but on this side, and that way it'll just be a little easier to work with. And I'll try to work with any of the weird um, points <laughs> that are happening. I'm going to be doing two rows of stitches. So let me just go over here. So when I stitch it to the garment, I will be stitching around the edge, except not the top. So I can put my hand in and use it as pocket. Although technically you could do this as just a, a non-functioning um, decoration. If you want to sew it all the way, like as is, sew it down. It's a little dot. It's fun. But if you want it to be a functioning pocket, I'm going to be sewing along the edge in a minute. But in preparation, I'm going to be doing another row of stitches just to kind of, I don't know, it's just sort of a functioning thing to keep this uh, side down. And it'll just end up looking a little uh, smoother in the end. I have flipped the pins from one side to the other. Now we're working with the fun clown gesture <laughs> pins. And I'm going to be stitching about uh, a fourth of an inch or three eighths of an inch from the edge just to kind of secure this um, flap. Oh, sorry, I can't even think right now. Anyway, so because there's going to be two stitches. So first I'm going to do the one on the inside and then we will deal with sewing around the edge to attach it to the shirt. So you can try the shirt on and kind of make sure it's like where you want the pocket to be. Not that it's like a pocket we use a lot, it's more decorative, but um, it could probably just cover up where you took out the old pocket. And I am going to, since I'm gonna make this a functional pocket, not just like a decoration of like a dot, um, I just made sure there was an opening at the top. And so I just put two pins there, just enough room to put in my hand. And I'm going to be stitching all along the outer edge up until those points. And then I'm going to do a little bit of back tacking right there to se secure it. And that's it. With this third rework, I'm going to create a hemline. It's a little tricky to explain. I call it the arch hemline. 
and it's pretty much cropping it across the back like normal but then instead of cropping it across the front as well actually i've got a button up i could kind of <laughs> i'm going to take that straight line and then curve it inward and leave the full placket but it kind of has a little bit of a corset or cod piece look to it so maybe not for everyone but it's kind of a it's kind of a fun um avant-garde look the main thing is to try it on figure out where i want to cut it and then it can be kind of tricky to create the curve so i'm going to try to do as much pinning and planning uh while i have it on and yeah let's get into it i have tried it on and just sort of made a mark where i wanted to hit the waist and a little bit of the curve um i'll know more when it's on the table and i'll do the other side too i just didn't want to do one side and it's all like completely different than the other so this is just a rough idea with some uh Taylor's chalk and you could add a little uh I guess like not seam allowance hem allowance if you want to go that direction but I think I'm actually going to be making some double fold binding bias tape whatever and I'm going to be covering the the raw hemline that way I just think that'll be a little a little easier than like trying to anytime you have a curve and you're trying to like do a, a hem on that it can be kind of tricky so this will be a little easier it's a little tricky to get this curve, so you might have to kind of go at it a few times. So I just do, did a rough little sketch, and now I'm going to create this line and then replicate it on the other side, and then I think I will cut it across the back. All right. <laughs> this is so fun. Okay. And let's see, I don't have to worry about the seam allowance, so I can cut it right, right where I want it. It'll be this and you can also like leave it raw or like just surge it if you want but <sighs> i'm a nerd and i can't just leave a raw edge most of the time all right oh wait oh i guess i'm drawing i'm not cutting so it's like asmr wise <laughs> just me thinking all right hmm <laughs> i guess this is kind of asmr wait very subtle <laughs> all right let's see oh did it right off or it goes off the table that's cool Let's see, let's see. It's kind of like weirdly hard, but it's not. I'm using like a hip curve to like smooth out on like a curve of any kind. I always find like starting. Yeah, I guess like because it's so amorphous, it's like it's helpful because like look at all the different types of curves. I'm like, I guess, but it, I'm always just like shifting, shifting. Yeah. I don't know. Um, it's yeah, I'm not great at this particular like uh is this the french curve or is that the one i know there's one that there's has one that's a hip curve and one hip, that's a okay hip curve. curve okay so this is the french curve okay. i think yeah anything that like <laughs> this is like i don't know how to say this like, there's a small it, one that looks like a i love if like we need another name we're like oh well here's a ruler and then like what's this curry we're like it's french like anything that's kind french of like curve. anything that's like Here's the weird one or the yeah. fancy one or the feminine one or the whatever like that's french i guess <laughs> like what <laughs> anyway <laughs> i mean i guess i understand that french fashion it kind of all goes together but it's just kind of funny all right and then where should the curve begin let's see hmm and this is a bit where i'm like Ooh. i know i'm like and sometimes it like you think it looks good and you try it on you're like actually this needs to go like deeper or whatever mm -hmm. uh, all right let me deepen this up a little bit this is all fascinating <laughs> it's like minutia all right and of course there's like schmutz everywhere let's see i think that's about right I'm gonna say if it's like if this is like way too long if it's like if this thing is going down to your knees like i mean feel free to trim it up you know um if you're like that's too perverse uh, i can't <laughs> now i'm going to try to flip it or echo it on the other side uh, as best i can
I have flipped it to the back. I've uh, unbuttoned it so I can just lay it out flat. And then here are the side seams. And I'm just going to cut it straight across the back pretty much. I might have to, I might end up doing a little more curve, but I'm going to go uh, straight first. And so I'm just going to either mark it with chalk or I might just go right in with the rotary cutter. I'm going to finish the raw hem of the arch hemline, which, okay, we can run through a few other names for it. Um, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So, okay, feel free to comment because I, I like to know, because it's kind of a weird one. Okay, if it scoops in the front, okay, then, like again, I just called it arch because I was trying to think of like, what's like a, a fun, like a beautiful word, but it's kind of simple, it arches, right? And some people like, there's been some interesting uh, options thrown around on Instagram. Um, so I've heard bikini hemline. Um, let's see, uh, cod piece. Um, what else? I'm trying to think. Uh, leotard. Uh, you know, body yeah, unbuttoned bodysuit. <laughs> um, what do I think? Yeah, tail coats, front tails, <laughs> front tails. Um, I don't know. I just think that for some reason it's just a rich area because it's it's kind of odd. And so if you have any uh, you know any ideas, brainstorm. Let me know because um, I'm open. But I just I've been calling it arch because I'm like oh, that sounds that sounds sexy and sophisticated. Oh, uh, and really it's just kind of like a weirdo. Uh, yeah, like unsnapped bodysuit headline. All right, but um, it's got a raw edge, so you could surge it, leave it raw. Do a little stay stitch, uh, serge it, and then do a single fold hem. You could try to do a double, but like I talked about, with um, the curve, it can get tricky and puckery. So I'm going to cover it with double fold binding. And I'm tragically going to have to make it myself because I don't have any right now. And it gets like really expensive. What this is, is you lay out some fabric, whatever color you want. I'm going to go with pretty much the same color, white. Um, and... I'm going to cut a strip on the bias, which means the 45 degree angle across the fabric. And I'm going to cut a strip. Let's see. Oh, I have to do math. Um, I think it's going to be about three eighths of an inch wide, all told, like when I pin it on. So that means half of it's three fourths. That means the whole thing is an inch and a half. And I knew that from the beginning. And this was a test. And you passed. <laughs> Here's another option. We could stop the bias tape at the end, you know, just simple at both ends, right? Or we could just keep going with this avant-garde madness and kind of have these little like danglies. I don't know, that could be something. I mean, as long as it did, I, sometimes when there's like a dangly and then like it kind of gets around my knees and I'm kind of like, oops, you know? So <laughs> I don't know, but if we want to keep going with the avant-garde vibe, um, just consider that when you are figuring out the length. So pretty much it'll be from one end to the other, but if you just want to eyeball it and do a couple of lengths across, that should probably do it. I've laid out the fabric. I'm not going to iron it <laughs> because no. And now I'm going to cut the strips and then we will get to ironing them. cut two strips. I think I ended up cutting them an inch and three quarters, just sort of split the difference. And I sort of measured, like measured it out on the shirt and it will be too short to just do one of them. So I'm gonna have to do two. 
and I'm going to cut, I'm going to like, when I sew them together, I'm going to do it. Um, this is such a small thing, but for some reason, when I just sew two things together, like straight, there's like a little bit of bulk. It's, it's minor, but anyways, I'm just going to cut, I mean, they're kind of already cut uh, on the bias. And so when I sew them together, I'm going to do this number and then stitch that. And then we'll have one long strip to go on. But for the ironing portion, the construction of this, it will end up looking like this. And so it's sort of a double fold. So like I said, you can buy this as well, but it's kind of pricey. Um, so I'm going to be ironing the long sides inward on one side, um, sort of meeting in the middle, and then I'm going to iron it flat. And so this is obviously, it's going to go around the edge when I sew it, Oop, a sandwich. Oh, I'm making it so difficult today. <laughs> We're going to sandwich like this. I've pinned the trim all the way around. Good time to mention you can also do contrast color, of course. And um, I have let it just hang. And like I, I mentioned, I can I can stop it there. Or I can let it go. I mean, we're going for avant-garde, right? So, um, I mean, this is literally to the ground. <laughs> but I might trim it a little bit. But I'm just going to let it go. And do I want to get into the perverse nature of how you, like, okay, don't wear it like this. Or you can. But anyway, <laughs> it's not a leotard. But uh, people might make that joke to you. Okay. So now I'm going to trim it off a little bit. And then wherever I trim it, I'm going to do this number where I fold it. I mean, I could leave it raw, but whatever. And I'm going to sort of clean finish it. And then I'm going to be stitching all the way, all the way around. Like, so it's going to be, you know, close to this inner edge. And maybe a little shorter. Because <laughs> I'm like, this one was truly touching the ground. But I like them to be a little off. I love how I'm like, it's also such a square, straight, like, it's so avant-garde. I'm like, it's a, it's a white button-up that I <laughs> cut a little bit off of. Isn't that crazy? Here's the final look. So I don't know if it's in frame, but it goes all the way down to the ground. So we've got the arch hemline here, the modern pocket there, and then the color block. Wait, oh, I'm sorry, wait, there seems to be something in this pocket. Oh, another note. And it matches. She thinks of everything. And I guess I'll go ahead and just see what this is about. <sighs> Poetry? 
Uh, sometimes I feel like a charlatan if a rework is too subtle or if the process isn't arduous. But sometimes a small tweak completely recontextualizes a garment, and we should celebrate ease and brevity when it falls in our laps. A moral victory for the lazy. Well, that is three for the books. Go on, you good thing. It's going too smoothly. <laughs> I'm being too competent. They'll be like, is she under duress? I'm scared. Okay. Uh, instead of like measure twice, cut once, I'm like have anxiety twice <laughs> or maybe 20 times and then never do, and then never do anything ever. So I've got this off white button up and this black button up and I'm going to cut the, let's see, let's make it, well, technically the right sleeve <laughs> off of the black button up and I'm cut the sleeve off of the cream. I need to stop saying button up. I'm saying it too many times. Okay, shirt, Drink just say shirt. I know, God, there's so many drinking games. <laughs> I can make anything that's so simple, like sounds like so complicated. Honest. Okay, it's honest, <laughs> you're confused now. And, oh, actually, shit, sorry, I forgot to iron it. I was like, why is this moving around? <laughs> He's like, because you fully haven't ironed it. <laughs> All right. Now, <laughs> now, 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 now,